Hello and welcome to this recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today has been pretty epic <laughs> adventure, and uh, we've got really cool progress though. So I'm just, I'm <laughs> satisfied. I'm just really tired. Uh, essentially, what we've done is taken this GeoJSON uh, query that we or response we get from the Django server that's coming from the PostGIS database that's populated with OpenStreetMap data. We get that response and pass it into the client and use a couple of libraries, uh, TurfJS, and uh, where did the other one go? Well, I'll <laughs> have to find it in a minute. TurfJS and where's our JSON? Polygon clipping. <clears throat> I was hoping that TurfJS would have us covered, and I think as of like the previous major version, it did. But they made a change to the API that actually kind of threw the whole game off. And I was tr trying to get a, um, essentially first get a buffer around some poly uh, some points on a map, and then mm, like get a union of those uh, buffers uh, so that it's easier to rec uh, recognize the geometry. In any case, um, TurfJS has both a buffer and a union, um, both buffer and union uh, functions. And uh, the union sounded promising. It takes two or more polygons. And the or more, because uh, that's the keyword here, we have a bunch of polygons that needed to go. But it uh, turned out that has not been working since version 6. Uh, but fortunately, um, this polygon clipping library was published. Oh, there we go. Over by Mike Fogel. So yeah, thank you, Mike. You kind of <laughs> saved the day here. So let me just uh, go ahead and demo the code. It's uh, or at least the functionality. Essentially, it lets you specify a, a, a buffer. So here we have uh, supermarkets in Tampra. Uh, if you maybe have seen the other videos, we've been doing a proximity analysis to see how easy it is for people to get food, and particularly how easy it is for them to walk to get groceries. So um, we estimate like a kilometer is a reasonable walking distance uh, each way to a grocery store, but some people might be comfortable walking two kilometers, or they might be wanting to walk or thinking miles. Oops. And uh, in any case, uh, with a relatively small number of points, these buffers are you know, pretty instantaneous. And this lets the end user kind of interactively define uh, the parameters of their analysis. Uh, we don't want to necessarily pre-assume uh, all the parameters are for every place that's potentially using this tool. Uh, you know, there's just essentially uh, different cities, different cultures might have different um, needs that are de defining you know their own urban <laughs> uh, sustainability metrics and so to the extent possible we want to let the end user not only uh, change the parameters of the analysis you know define their own questions but also do so in a way that like is immediate and you can see the change right away you don't have to wait uh, for something uh, on the server to happen if possible I know that some of these uh, geo um, computations are fairly uh, slow to run on the server. Um, essentially, let's go ahead and spin through the uh, the Vue.js code, and hopefully, I can kind of summarize it pretty quickly. In our query, uh, we've let's see, haven't really changed it too much. The parameters are still here. I just hard coded right now to be supermarket. Uh, food sources in Tampere tend to be either. Uh, supermarkets or convenience stores. And convenience stores are almost not really a food source in my opinion, but uh, some of them are, and it's kind of a gray area where the difference between a, well, a supermarket is much larger than a convenience store. So we're using just the uh, OpenStreetMap um, kind of ontology. So one of the things I, I stopped using um, Mapbox GL. We we're using a view plugin for Mapbox GL, and just the documentation for the view map box and the map box GL documentation it was just kind of challenging it wasn't really a, you know I didn't want to continue using it 
Uh, overall, though, I think it's a really good project. I like what Mapbox are doing. It just didn't seem like a good fit here. I know there's trade-offs. You know, I've tried Leaflet and Mapbox, and now we're with Open Layers. But I believe Open Layers is more in the spirit of the project we're working on. So I switched over to using Open Layers. And essentially what we've done here is added a like a layout using Quasar's layout function. So we have, um, I'm just going to put these controls someplace. We'll maybe tweak the aesthetic a little bit uh, so we don't have to have this whole white, empty white space over here. Maybe I could overlay it on the map or something, but I just wanted to get them up there. So we essentially have uh, two rows with a Q input and a Q select on the top row. And it lets us um, change the buffer distance and units. And we're binding those to the view model, which we'll get to in a minute. And then we have this view layers map. And inside of the map, you have a bunch of other components of view that you can control the zoom and synchronize it uh, with the data model. We've added an op open stream map layer with just like three lines. Whereas um, my experience when I did that with Mapbox Geo was fairly frustrating. It's not very well documented how to use other layer sources than uh, Mapbox's hosted layer sources and particularly having to use the Mapbox uh, API key. And I understand that that's their data model and that's their prerogative. Um, but really I just want to drop an OpenStreetMap base layer in there. Uh, and it took just, <laughs> it was instantaneous almost. Um, then we actually have these series of points here you can see, and I can move those to the top, but uh, those are the supermarkets. Um, and uh, we'll show how those are populated in just a moment. But basically, you just add a layer with a vector source inside of it, and uh, we add send the features to that layer. Uh, and then define a couple of styles to make those sort of stand out uh, and stand out on the background little bit, we can make them a little bit bigger perhaps. And see if that, uh, you know, shows up a little bit better. Then we did two geoprocessing steps. First the buffering and then the union of the buffer. And uh, we passed that to the map as a multi-polygon because there's a, uh, well in this, with these parameters there's only one, but in some cases you can have multiple. Uh, so we're using, um, on the script to get the data from the server, we're using Axios to make the request. We're using TurfJS to do the buffering. And then this polygon clipping to do the union. And really, I'd kind of prefer to use just Turf in both cases, but uh, after about an hour or so, trying different approaches, uh, just had to <laughs> go another route to flow around the thing. Uh, so we're importing view and uh, let's see, we're registering view layers with view so that we can use all of the view layers components. We're centering the map on Tampara, zooming in a little bit closely and st starting with uh, our data saying that there's no open street map data. We're defaulting to kilometers and a distance of one kilometer, which is a, I think a reasonable walking distance for groceries, but this can obviously be overridden, so that's the goal. And we're letting people choose their their units of measure. We're defaulting to kilometers, which I think is a reasonable default as well. We are then creating two computed properties, bu buffered in uh, buffers and union. And if the OpenStreetMap data have come back from the server, which we'll see in a minute, and we're just using that um, TurfJS buffer method to buffer the data by the di distance and the units. And it returns that to essentially it was originally returning the map, but it's a computed function, so then it can be called from within other reactive uh, contexts. So then our union function calls the buffers or checks that they, there's a value there. Otherwise, yeah. if there was no open street map data, then they would return false. So this would be falsy. But if there is a buffers data, then we're going to map over those features and return the coordinates because the polygon clipping um, union function just takes the raw coordinates. It uh, doesn't handle the higher level uh, constructs like point or feature, um, although the documentation sort of alludes to those concepts. But in any case, we return that union back. And I suppose I could just uh, make my code a little more uh, uh, 
brief by just returning it directly there, but in any case, there we are. And finally, when the map is mounted to the DOM, we're going to try to get the data from this server. So we're going to make the request in and return it. We're going to uh, attach that response data to the, uh, the data model for this map. That's about it. It's uh, also to render the map, we have to tell it to render it full width and full height. I'm not sure if it's going underneath these uh, this footer bar, uh, but it doesn't seem to be an issue. Uh, but if so, we can put it in 90 uh, view height, something like that. I mean, everything, it's not a lot of code. It just took f like four and a half hours <laughs> of figuring things out. But I'm, I'm really glad. Um, that the kind of rendering of these buffers and creating the union is so snappy because um, I think again really important that the uh, end user can define their own analysis and kind of see things right away before submitting perhaps a more complicated job to the server uh, such as selecting the buildings within that catchment and then adding a label or whether or not the building has ready access to grocery stores uh, these ones would be false, these would be true. That's a server-side operation most likely because the, there's a lot of building footprints geometry. We're not going to reasonably send those to the client nor do the geo within query in the client. We want to use an index to data source like uh, we're using PostGIS for that. Okay, well that has been a recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. This project is open source on GitHub, github.com slash sustainable urban design. CodeBuddies.org is also an open source project and active community. If you'd like to get involved with other similar projects or like-minded people, stop by CodeBuddies.org or GitHub.com slash CodeBuddies. Well, thank you for your time. Have a great day, and I hope you're staying well out there.